Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minwi Maitri. When I was a child, my father would recite poems, usually around holidays. So as a young boy, I always remembered um, was the night before Christmas and all through the house. But it's Halloween, and at every Halloween, my father would begin to recite Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. And I decided I would use a little Edgar Allan Poe to help me out tonight. So my adjustment of the raven goes a little bit like this. Once upon a Zazen query, while I pondered weak and weary, over a many, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten koans, while I nodded, avoided, avoiding napping, suddenly there came a tapping. And that's as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my zendo door. Tis some hungry ghost, I muttered, tapping at my zendo door, longing for merits evermore. So with the help of Edgar Allan Poe, we've set the scene for Buddhist ghost stories. There are lots of ghost stories in Buddhism. Some modern ghost stories we know about, I think it was just a year ago or so, maybe less. Uh, I think I gave a Dharma talk on Vulan or the Ulambana Sutra and what happens here in Vietnam during Vulan. Um, and in the Mahayana tradition, filial piety has a lot of, uh, of undercurrents that go on with why someone might become a ghost. Um, and we'll talk about Kshiti Garba in a little while, the Bodhisattva that we seek assistance from in transferring our merits to those who may be lost in the ghost or hell realms. But in the Pali Canon, there's actually a section of the Kudaka Nikaya called Ghost Stories. And there are 51 canonized ghost stories in the Pali Canon. And I picked a few of those tonight, maybe to shock you a little bit, maybe to just give you a little flavor of what they talked about in their ghost stories. But in the Petavatu, that, that literally means ghost stories, number 43 goes like this. And this is Mahamogalana, who you're probably familiar with. Mahamogalana says this. Oh, unlucky one, you are standing in a pit of shit. Who are you? What kind of evil deed did you do? How can I know for sure what happened to you? Bante, I am a ghost. As a result of my evil deeds, I have been born into this ghost world. I am suffering very much. To which Mahala, Mah, Mo, ah, Bante Mahamogalana responded, what kind of evil deed did you do by body, speech, or mind to suffer like this? When I was in the human world, I let a monk stand in, stay in my house. The monk was very greedy and jealous of his supporters. He insulted good monks. I listened to that evil monk's words. Following him, I too insulted good monks. That is the evil deed I did from which I was reborn in the ghost world. Mogulana replied, you associated with that evil monk thinking he was a good friend? What happened to the monk after death? Bonte, that evil monk has also been born in the ghost world. He is suffering in the same pit of shit where I suffer. I am standing on his head. He lives as a servant to me here. Bonte, I have to eat other people's shit while he has to eat mine. Wow, what a ghost story. So that's number 43 of the ghost stories of the Pali Canon. Number 44 is almost exactly the same story, but it's a woman instead of a man. Um, 
if you see my backdrop here, you see what in the Chinese tradition, if I can move my head just a little bit, you see what a hungry ghost looks like uh, in their mythology. Uh, the hungry ghost is usually has a, a very small neck where, where they can't choke down food at all. And so even small grains of rice will be thrown to them in ceremonies, hoping that they can they can eat even just a small grain of rice. And then they have a big overextended belly that shows that they're always hungry. Um, so that gives you a little bit of an idea. There's some other ones where it shows that they're eating coals. Uh, and uh, or or there's a, a stick with fire being shoved down their throats. There's lots of visualizations see from uh, the East Asian traditions of, of hungry ghosts and what they are. I have done an evil deed as human and have been reborn in the world of ghosts. Every morning I give birth to five sons and in the evening another five are born. I eat them all that night but I will still be hungry. My heart is burning with hunger so much that it is smoking. I get no water to drink. See the disaster that has happened to me? The monk then replies, Now what evil deed have you done by body, speech, or mind? What have you done so that you have to eat your own sons? My husband's other wife was about to give birth. I was extremely jealous of her. With that evil mind, I gave her some medicine that would kill the unborn baby. The two-month-old embryo flowed out just like blood. The baby grandmother became very angry with me and called her relatives. She frightened me and made me swear an oath. I told a terrible lie by saying, if I was the one who killed the baby, I will eat my own sons. As a result of that evil deed and the lie I told, I have to eat my sons and be covered by their blood. What horrible stories um, appear in these ghost stories. Um, but they all point to the same things. They point to people doing evil deeds in life. Usually the evil deeds are against a holy person or an innocent person, or they show a lot of greed. And the person is then reborn into the hell realms. A lot of these same traditions followed along in the, uh, as A, as Buddhism moved further and further east into East Asia. And it met a lot of uh, local traditions too. Uh, Confucian and Taoist thoughts of um, children needing to show filial piety. And from this tradition of uh, filial piety rose the tradition and the sutra about Kshiti Garba, whom we in our tradition um, chant to Jijang Bosal. So in Korean, the Bodhisattva Kshiti Garba is called Jijang Bosal, meaning Bodhisattva. Uh, that is Dijang in Chinese. So um, the idea of this very uh, promise to spend his, his repeated life uh, vowing never to attain Buddhahood until he saves all sentient beings. And usually the story goes, he vows to save them from the hell realms. Um, so in, in order to come out of this pit of despair that we were talking about these hungry ghosts from the ghost stories of the Pali Canon. We have uh, several wonderful sutras in the East Asian traditions uh, about filial piety, uh, but one is the great sutra about Kshitigarbha. So the, in the Kshitigarbha Bodhisattva Sutra, we learn two stories about who was Kshitigarbha uh, and how did he um, come to be this great bodhisattva. And so in that sutra, there are two stories. The first story is that there were there was many countless eons ago, kalpas ago, uh, there were two kings and they lived in kingdoms side by side. And these were two righteous kings, uh, wheel turning monarchs, they may have been called. Um, 
and they served their people very well uh, and were very devout to the Dharma. And in their lives, lifetimes, one vowed to become the next Buddha and the other vowed that he would never attain Buddhahood until he was able to save all of his citizens from suffering and despair. The one who vowed to become a Buddha became the Buddha of the next dispensation. But the one who vowed to save all of his citizens became Kshiti Garba. And then the other story that's told is about a young girl. A young girl who's the daughter of a Brahmin and her mother had passed away when she was very young and she didn't know why, but she was always making, uh, dedicating merit to her mother. One day, uh, the Buddha of her dispensation was passing through town uh, and she went to the Buddha and she asked the Buddha, how can I help my mother? Um, I know she's in hell. I, I, I want to relieve her suffering. Uh, my father tells me basically that she was not a good person, um, but she's still my mother. Again, we see this filial piety coming into the story of East Asia Sutras. And the Buddha instructed her what to do. And so, um, and it was to pay homage to this Buddha for, uh, for every day. And uh, so to dedicate her, her um, practice to this one Buddha, and it would save her mother from the depths of hell. So this young girl uh, went and bought a, a painting of the Buddha and had the Buddha hanging in her house and she dedicated uh, all of her practice towards this Buddha. And um, when the Buddha came back through town, passing through with his Sangha of monks, she asked the Buddha was, you know, hey, I've been doing this just as you instructed me. What's the, uh, what's the status of my mother? And the Buddha said, your mother will be reborn um, as a son of the servant of one of your, in your household. Uh, unfortunately, uh, your mother still has a lot of karma left to burn off and she will only live to be 13 years old. This boy will only live to be 13 years old. Um, and sure enough, within about a year, a child, a son was born to the neighbors, uh, to the servants of this young girl. And, uh, when the servant, boy was old enough. He told her the story of her mother. Um, and sure enough, the, the little boy died at age 13. And the little girl went back to the Buddha and said, I want to devote my life and all of my lifetimes to saving my mother again from the realms of hell. And the Buddha said, you will be reborn. You'll be reborn as the Bodhisattva Kishiti Garbha. So those are the two stories of Kshiti Garba, Jijang Bosal, as we call him in our tradition, whose whole intent was to save people from the realms of hell. And he still does. Uh, that tradition lives on all throughout East Asia. Um, so as we sit and think about ghosts, where these traditions come from within our own traditions, there's good stories and there's bad. But in the end, they all point to living a good life, following the life of gratitude, generosity, helping other people, living by the six perfections. And when we do, we save ourselves and we save those whom we dedicate our merit to from the depths of hell. Thank you.